connected with Going Solo, and you are listening to WGSN DV Going Solo Network. And today I have with me Jeffrey Bloom. Jeffrey Bloom is the CEO of Creative Resolutions Group. He is also the CEO of Mediation Society of Long Island, uh, Inc. And he has a terrific radio show, which is a WL. I N Y Radio, and it's Ask the Mediator. So, welcome to the show. Thank you. It is great having you. You know, you and I have had many conversations about trying to change, you know, the face of divorce a little bit. Tell us, as we start into this segment, how you got into doing what you're doing. Well, I was um, at uh, 49. I went to law school, and I did my program through uh, Concord which is Captain University, so it was an online program. And it's something I always wanted to do, you know, to get to be a lawyer initially. And when I got to this program, it turned out that I was only eligible to take the bar in California, uh, and I wouldn't be able to practice in New York, but I went ahead anyway because it was a little bit more affordable than going to a brick-and-mortar school. And at that point in my life, uh, I just wanted to take on that larger debt as far as brick-and-mortar. You know, I wish my time machine was working and I can go back in time and <laughs> do it over again. I couldn't do that. But at the time, I was working for a litigation para, as a litigation paralegal in a plaintiff personal injury law firm. And as I was going to school, uh, he did both uh, personal injury and real estate. And what happened was business slowed down at certain times, very drastically. Because when you only have two services you're providing, you know, it's easy to have two things dry up at once. Right. So he's looking at ways to expand a practice. And in October 2010, New York had, was the last day to approve no-fault divorce. And what that basically means is nobody has to take fault anymore. One party claims there's a retrieval breakdown of the marriage for six months or longer. The other side agrees. They've been married at least six months, and they can agree on all the issues, file paperwork, and they're done. So he said, okay, look into it. Let's see what we have to do. So I was telling him, you don't know, have to appear in court. You produce the papers, you file it. So as I was doing the research, I, I found mediation. And I said, look, we have both ends of the spectrum here. So um, I paid for and I went to my own mediation training. We launched a no-fault divorce. I mediated some cases while I was at the firm. And this, was, this started in 2011. And around the end of 2013, I want to say, he didn't think he wanted to continue with the family law portion anymore. Uh, he was getting very busy with real estate. He'd taken over his dad's practice, uh, had some attorneys on board. He said to me, look, I know you completed law school. You're almost finished with your master's degree in negotiation dispute resolution. You probably don't want to go back to being just a paralegal. Maybe we should come up with an exit strategy. So um, I made the jump and went out on my own in uh, January of 2014, uh, full time. And so November of this year will be um, three years full-time and five years total that I've been mediating. Well, congratulations. You know, I, I really do like mediation. And the reason for that is because I've seen so many couples spend a lot of time arguing, spending a lot of money, and they really have kind of gotten to the same place, divorced. And so, you know, you're going to get there. So why not try to work it out? So I love the idea of trying to change the face of divorce a little bit, a little bit more. So tell us if, if someone was looking at divorcing, if they were looking at doing this, what would be the pros of doing mediation for them? Other than okay. what you just said. <laughs> well, the, the pros are um, they're going to save a lot of money. Um, and so, for example, in New York, the average retainer fee for an attorney uh, family law is anywhere from ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Could be more. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a little bit less. But no matter what it is, you're, it's the retainer fee, and that's going to be gone no matter what happens. Right. So let's say it's ten thousand dollars each. Now it's twenty grand. If you're going through all the way to trial and with depositions and discovery, and you know you're looking at without exaggerating twenty twenty five thousand dollars each for a uh, for litigation process. That's fifty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars. Uh, mediation, soup to nuts, generally costs less than 6000 total. Not each. Uh, most of mine cost less than 5000 Wow. If, if there's a need for um, experts, like a forensic accountant, somebody to evaluate a business, uh, to do some financial, you know, financial planner, then, then maybe you're looking at six to 8000 I think I've had one that 
went 10,000, that was, they would retain those other services to get what it, what it is they need. But again, $10,000, um, $80,000. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. Which one do you want? Uh, process is going to take you at least two, two years or more if you're lucky. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when, when you're going through assets and, and splitting things up, why not have more to split up? Okay. So when it comes to child support and finances and moving on with your life, and let's just take one at a time, you know, child support and residential custody, who knows what's best for the kids other than mom and dad. The attorneys don't know. Uh, the judge doesn't know. They're going to base everything just on, on the law. There's going to be one winner, one loser. Mediation is a win-win. Everything that goes into the final agreement, everything that goes in the, in the no fault divorce paperwork is what the two parties want to go in there. Uh, and that, be, be, that being said, they're much more likely to abide by that and continue abiding by the terms if it's something they both agree to rather than somebody telling them what's something to do. So the, other, the flip side of that, so you go through the litigation system and a judge says, okay, um, you're a non-residential parent and you've got to pay this much of child support and then you have to do this, you have to do this, whatever the case may be. One year later, two years later, somebody doesn't abide by those terms. And I can get into some of the most common. Then what do you, then what do, you do? Then the other side's got to get an attorney again. <laughs> they got to pay more fees. The other side's going to have to get an attorney if they can get it. They're going to have to go back to court. The whole process starts all over again. Right. So the example I like to use, uh, everything is flexible mediation. As long as the couple agrees, that's fine. Whether I think it's fair or not, it doesn't matter. It's what they, what they know. So let's just say uh, we're doing child support, just to use one example. And based on the Child Support Standards Act, um, dad's not the, not, not the residential parent in this case. Mom's got the residential parent, mm -hmm. and dad's supposed to pay $1,500 a month in child support based on the incomes. Dad could say, look, I can't, I can't do $1,500 because I have to live it on my own now and have my own expenses, and i got to get an apartment. But I'm paying for Johnny's you know, softball and Mary's ballet, and I'm providing health insurance. So in order for me to live, I could pay $1,100 a month. Now just make up numbers. Right. Uh, uh, mom could say, $1,100 a month, I could do that. Bam, it's, it's in writing. They got it. Mm -hmm. Uh, what happens with the assets? You keep your pension plan, I keep mine, or I keep mine, and you can have the house. Uh, again, everything is flexible rather than somebody telling you what to do. And it's right. really, really a big difference. And my goal is always to have a win-win uh, mm -hmm. in regards to mediation at the end. Something that yeah. I always tell them many times during the session, when we're done, I want you both to be able to sign something that you're comfortable with, that you understand, and Nobody walks away signing something that it's just not going to work for me because then it defeats a purpose. Right. So emotionally, it really puts them in a, a good place because they feel like they've gotten a little bit of control in the process. They've made decisions that are based on their own needs and wants and desires. And so this way they're walking out of it with a little bit more of a, okay, we can, we can move on with our lives. We can move forward with this and, and we can come together. You know, the thing is, is when you start in, um, you know, an adversarial, uh, situation you're basically fighting you know and you're spending a lot of money and at the end of the day you're at pretty much the same place but not you know not as wealthy and not as comfortable but the thing is is you are there facing your ex um, in in kind of a, an angry mode you know because it's not what you wanted and so I think personally by going through mediation, being able to control the process a little bit, understand it, and agree upon where you're going to go forward after that, it really puts you in, I, I think, in a more comfortable situation than versus coming out of the courthouse, crying emotional, and thinking, oh, gosh, how am I going to live through this now? So. Well, uh, not only the fighting, but the communication. I mean, think about it. Uh, we all remember the telephone game, right? We went to middle school, and a teacher would whisper something in the ear of the person in front of the room. By the time it got to the other end, it was totally different. So here's a litigation process, and, um, you know, uh, Mary and John are getting divorced. And now Mary and John can't communicate anymore because you both have attorneys. So Mary tells her attorney what, what she wants. Her attorney tells John's attorney. Johnny tells, John's attorney tells John, and it goes back and forth like that, right? Mm -hmm. can't, can't, can't miscommunication happen that way? Now you're in front of a judge. The judge doesn't want to hear from the parties, only from the attorneys. So what's important for you 
uh, what's a hot button issue for you, for you will be told in court. That's not relevant. It doesn't matter, but it's relevant to you. Mm -hmm. so you're in a room together with a neutral third person like myself or or mediator, or whoever you're using, and you can exchange ideas. And even though one side might not admit that they understand uh, why the other one is upset or whatever it is, it's they hear it. It's in the back of their mind. They're right there. Isn't that better to to communicate when a person's right there? versus going to three, four different people, let mm -hmm. alone talk about earlier, the money, right? You know? Yeah. Uh, there was a prominent family law attorney years ago who said, um, and, and not all attorneys like this, but uh, you know, he says, look, I don't take a family law case unless there's $500,000 or more in assets because I'm going to get $175,000 or more. The other, side, the other attorney is going to get $175,000, and the couple's going to be left uh, to split what's left. To which the mediator who'd been mediating for you know many years says, you know, it's, how do you know you get that much money? It's a lot of money. That's simple. All I have to do is create an argument. So what some attorneys do is they'll get the intake, they'll look at the net worth statement, and automatically they're thinking what they're going to bill for that case. And then if you run out of money, they can put a lien on a house or any other assets you have. Um, in addition to that, um, it, it's I'm trying to think in, in along with with, uh, with the finances. Um, I've, I've met many couples who've gone through the litigation process, got to a point where they both, one or both ran out of money and were forced to sign a stipulation settlement that didn't work for one or both of the parties. I hear about it all the time. People tell me, where were you five years ago? I didn't know mediation existed. You know, it's been around 45 plus years. Were you 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Well, <laughs> one guy said, if I killed my wife, I'd been out of jail by now. Um, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a horrible process. There's parent alienation from uh, children to parents. There's so many uh, negative things to come out of a litigated divorce that I that I try to, and I hope I'm able to alleviate. Right now, can you do like let's say you're you're already divorced and you've come up with you know a problem, and you may have to go back to court again to be able to get that worked out. Can you go to mediation and try to get those things resolved again? You know, things change. Time times exactly. change. Absolutely. You know. So, you can, only can plan you go back and re during. revisit it? Yep, mm -hmm. I, have a, I have an extensive checklist. I tell them that things could change that you didn't didn't think about or nobody thought about. Look, I've had couples come to me. They've put the litigation process on hold because they were at a point where they couldn't decide on one or two things and they wanted to get that resolved and then continue the litigation process to save a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had couples come back after mediation years down the line after their divorce was done. And so, Jeff, this came up. We want to change. Can we do that? Sure. So they come in, we talk about it, and then what I do is it's called a uh, amended stipulation of settlement. Right. So, it's, so everything that they agreed to originally still applies with the exception of whichever clauses we're working on. I file it in the court for them, and that's it. They're done. A legally binding contract, and they can do that. Absolutely. Right. Now, but that is something that both parties have to agree to. You couldn't, you couldn't for sure – other your ex to be able to go to mediation uh, other than some states do require mediation i know florida right. does. i think florida is one of them right right where they, so, where they but you have to, to file a court case and then go to mediation you couldn't just go straight to mediation if the party didn't want to do it right i guess right you have to have, to have both willing to go uh, yeah. and, and and every case that i get initially it's usually one party to call it first mm -hmm. and i always ask that question um i offer my a free a 30 minute in office consultation they can both come in, no obligation, ask me any questions they want, see if they feel comfortable with me. Um, but, right, you can't just mediate with one, uh, and if the other one doesn't, because it just, it just won't work. Right, absolutely. Okay. At least want to be able to sit down and try it. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about being a mediator, what it takes to be a mediator. Do you want to do this type of living, you know, change your career? There's a lot of people out there that have gone through divorce and now are looking for, you know, ways of making money, and maybe being a mediator is the thing for you. So we're going to take a quick break. We have Jeffrey Bloom with us, and we'll be right back. This is Cece with Going Solo. You are listening to WGSN-TV Going Solo Network. We'll be right back. 
Okay, so we're going to come on back, and this is Cece with Going Solo. You are listening to WGSN-DV Going Solo Network. We do have Jeffrey Bloom with us. The first part of the show, we talked about mediation, how to go through divorce, maybe saving yourself some money, being able to, um, you know, really kind of alleviate some of the arguments, some of the emotional drainage that we have in, in a divorce. Jeffrey Bloom is the CEO of Creative Solutions Group and also the CEO of Mediation Society of Long Island. He has a fantastic radio show himself. It's on WLINY Radio, and it's called Ask the Mediator. So welcome back to the show, Jeffrey. Thanks. And just to let the listeners know, WLINY is an internet radio station that's yeah. broadcast both locally in the New York area and nationally. So you can go to WLINY.com. I'm on Monday, every Monday evening, 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And in addition to that, you could, uh, other than on your computer, you could look it up on your TuneIn app on your phone or, or smart device, whatever the case may be. Um, and if you have that app, just go on WLNY and you can listen uh, on there also as well. Yeah, it's a great show. And you you do allow um, call-ins and things like that. People call in ask questions in. all the time. Yep. Yeah, I called in on, on one of the shows, and, and it's a really good show. So if you guys are Thank thinking you. about going through mediation or you have something like that that you want to, you know, really kind of get a little bit more information, your show is definitely a great show to listen to. And so I'd we, also like to uh, let your listeners know my website in case they want to look. And yes, get some information. Mm -hmm. It's uh, mymediationservices.com. Great. That's great. Well, let's talk a little bit about, because I know that it's important for both you and I to kind of change the face of divorce a little bit. And so being a mediator is kind of a little bit of a hot topic right now, isn't it? And so people are looking at other ways of getting divorced and doing it differently. And so being a mediator at this time in the stage would probably be a great thing, a great career for someone if they're looking to be able to get into it. And I know that you um, are definitely, you know, interested in teaching those that are interested in mediation. So tell us a little bit of the parameters of what you have to, to do in order to be a mediator. Okay. Uh, it it uh, deviates from each state. Uh, there are some states that have a certification requirement, some that don't. Uh, for example, I'm in New York. And even though I've been through certifications and basic and advanced trainings, it's not a requirement in New York. Florida has a requirement. Tennessee does. And I'm trying to remember some of the other ones. So it depends on your state that you're in. I run a five-day, 40-hour basic mediation trainers course uh, so that when you're done with my course, you can mediate if you want to. Uh, you can hang your shingle and you can mediate, assuming there's no requ other requirements for your state. Uh, I've had a lot of requests to develop that into an online training program. So that's something I'm working on at the present time. And I, I want to make it just as effective as my in-person one because I don't want to just throw something together. Uh, it's important. Uh, in fact, even now, I'm uh, training ninth graders at a local charter school as a peer mediation program. I'm teaching them how to be peer mediators to help resolve conflict among other students. They're more likely to listen to other students than you know, a principal or an adult or something like that. So I have a very extensive training background. My whole goal is the more of us that are out there, the, the more uh, there's business there, right? With the divorce rate being 50, 55%, sometimes as high as 60%, the business is there. Um, and in addition to, you know, not to sound ghoulish, for lack of a better term, but now with the same-sex marriage, there'll be more divorces, right? Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> so, um, but but the problem with with that with the business, and it's getting a little better, is people are getting a lot of misinformation. So there are old school attorneys who will tell somebody, "Ah, oh, you can't do mediation. You, you got to fight for what you want." They'll sit in the office. There's a lot of emotions, right, going on when you go into divorce, and they'll promise that that client, their moon, the stars, and the sun. I'll get you that, no problem. You know, and no attorney worth his or her salt can guarantee an outcome uh, from a litigation. They just can't. It's just, um, it's impossible. So, and and I do something different than most mediators. Uh, most mediators are afraid to do this. But if somebody calls me and they're not sure, I'll tell them, call, call an attorney. You know, call a couple attorneys. Call, speak to, and meet with a, a couple of mediators. So, make, so you make an educated decision. So 10 years, 20 years down the line, you'll say, ah, oh, I should have done that, or I didn't know that existed. <clears throat> Look, mediation is not 100% for all couples, nor is litigation. Why not know what your options are so you can make an educated decision and feel comfortable with it? 
Right. Absolutely. So I think it's a really great career if someone's looking at being able to get into something. Now, do they have to have any um, any background, any educational background in the, in the past in order to be a mediator? No. In fact, uh, the, 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 um, one of the falsities or not truths is you have to be an attorney. You know, mm -hmm. um, if, and there are attorney mediators, but attorneys are trained to be advocates. And unless they've had some type of mediation training, um, it makes it very difficult for them to act as a mediator. But, but mediators are therapists I've seen. Um, I said I was a paralegal. There are attorneys. Um, and, and I've seen others in other trainings that come from all different walks of life. Maybe they want to add this to their current practice or what they do, or they want, to, or a mom who stay at home mom wants to start a part time or full time business. Um, so if you're a person who likes to help people, and it's something you want to do, then there is no other requirement other than taking, you know, like I said, some some training and learning how to do this. Right. Yeah. So I think it's a fantastic thing for someone if they if it's, it's something that they might be interested in. I think a lot of times as we're coming through divorce, you know, we we kind of get a little bit of a passion about that particular field. And so if you're looking at something and you want to try to do something a little bit different, maybe something to help someone, um, it would be a great a great thing to do. So again, uh, Jeffrey, tell us how we can reach you if we're interested in doing the course. Okay. And real quick, what I wanted to mention was, and I know this is recorded, but I have my archive shows on the WLINY website tonight. I have Gary Jacobs on, who's uh, the president for Americans for Legal Reform. Mm -hmm. And he's very active in trying to get some of these laws changed, you know, for the people to go to the litigation process. Um, so it's not as crazy as it is also, because there's just so many things that, that, uh, where people lose it. So I just want to mention that also, because it be, it'll be, should be an interesting show. Um, in regards to getting a hold of me, my uh, office number is 516-308-7808. Mm -hmm. My website is mymediationservices.com. Uh, you can call me. Uh, we can talk on the phone. Let me know what your needs are. Again, um, hopefully the next couple of months, I'll be launching my online version of my training. Other than that, presently I do a in-person over five days, um, you know, five full days. And you leave with a certification, and again, you can leave with an. And then there's also comes with support for me, so you're not left. You know, Jeff. Now what do I do? You know, so um, again, the whole idea is is to get the word out there uh, that we that we can do this. We can help people go through the process, and hopefully have more win wins than win lose or lose lose situations. Right. That sounds great. Now, do you have a, a class coming up that someone, if they wanted to enroll in pretty quickly, would they be able to do it or? Um, I'm, uh, those new dates will be on my website within the next week or two. Today is November 7th. I would say by the end of this week, uh, my tentative dates are the, the last three days in March, uh, which is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I have to look at my calendar real quick. In fact, uh, while you're here, I might okay. as well look. What the heck, right? <laughs> yeah, what the heck? I, I have to uh, confirm all my uh, expert guest speakers that come in also that provide value to the program. <clears throat> so tentatively right now, it's um, March 31st, April 1st, and April 2nd is the first three days. Okay. And then the next um, two days will be um, Saturday and Sunday, the first and second, excuse me, this is for, okay. this, I skip a week. And then it, it's the um, seventh, either seventh and eighth of uh, of April, or the fourteenth and fifteenth will be the second two days. Okay. So I'm working so on performing those, and that yeah. that'll be coming mm -hmm. up soon um, in regards mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. Great. So that's pretty. That's pretty quick. That's pretty right around the corner, you know, because we have the holidays, and then after the holidays, you know, we'll be able to catch our. And our I've had a, I've had many requests. Uh, can I do it sooner than then? Sooner than. Um, you know, they're not late and doing it in February. So again, I'm open. If I get enough people that want to do it, I'll, you know, I can put together a class and do that and get my speakers together and, and so forth. Okay. Well, that sounds great. So if anyone is interested, please give him a call. His number is 516-308-7808. And that's Jeffrey Bloom. It is so great to have you on the show. Is there anything that you else you'd like to share with the listeners before we close the show? Uh, no, I don't think so. Again, if you have any questions, feel, feel free to email me or, or uh, call and ask or and check out my website. I got an FAQ page um, and I'd be happy to help anyone. Even if you're going through the process now, 
of the divorce and want to, um, and you have questions, and, and I'm willing to help, but no obligation. Oh, that's super. Well, thank you so much. You are listening to Jeffrey Bloom. And again, he is a CEO of Creative Solutions Group. Also creative, the, creative, creative Resolutions. Group. Uh, resolutions, I'm sorry. Creative Resolutions Group and the CEO of Mediation Society of Long Island. He does have a fantastic radio show, internet radio show, which is on tonight and on Mondays, um, 8, 8 to 9. And it's Ask the Mediator on W. L I N Y radio. So thank you so much, Jeffrey. I appreciate you being on the show today. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you. Well, this is Cece with Going Solo, and you are listening to WGSN DB Going Solo uh, Internet Radio. It's so great to have you, Jeffrey. Bye for now. Take care.